this video, Bethany describes how she plans for a unit of instruction. This kind of planning involves three practices that build upon one another. The first practice is unpacking and prioritizing the science ideas in the curriculum and the standards. The second practice is identifying an anchoring phenomenon and developing a causal explanation for it. The third practice uses this causal explanation together with the standards to develop a sequence of learning activities for students. So when you first thought you were going to teach ecosystems, uh, what went through your mind? Well, when I first think of a unit and I just come up with the, the kind of topic of the unit, then I try to think of interesting phenomena that relate to it. And I had heard about this lynx and hare phenomenon of um, kind of cycling populations. And so I knew I wanted to do something about populations and how they um, maintain balance, but also can change and how that's related to the environment. Mm -hmm. And those two cycles aren't quite in synchrony with one another. Right. So it's kind of puzzling about why the cycles in the first place and why they're not matched up. Exactly. Okay. So when you think about working with the standards, and let me just give you the page that you had already looked at, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of standards stood out for you as things that you definitely could address in this unit? Um, well, I see that the standard here... Elevates. Bethany has identified several applicable standards for her unit. One of these is using the scientific practice of argumentation to state and evaluate claims about complex interactions in ecosystems. Another idea is using mathematical representations to support explanations about carrying capacity. A third idea is about ecosystem dynamics and resilience. Because ambitious science teaching always includes modeling and evidence-based explanations as the core of the work the students do, she is comfortable with these scientific practices being embedded in this unit. Tied to that are um, things that I tried to incorporate into the unit. So this idea that there's interdependent relationships in ecosystems, that um, there's carrying capacities and things like predation and competition are important, and so kind of those main ideas of um, those interdependent relationships, mm -hmm. especially between the lynx and the hare. And, um, and then also I thought it was really important to include the cycles of matter and energy. So thinking about if we have this carrying capacity, why? And thinking about how energy flows through this system and how matter flows through this system and kind of those classic ideas of carbon and nitrogen cycle and um, the energy flow food web kind of ideas. And then lastly, this idea that you can ecosystem dynamics functioning and resilience. The idea that um, because of all these complex interactions, um, that the all those interactions working together are kind of what allow us to have this fluctuation, but also stability. Mm -hmm. So as you planned your unit, you thought about each of these ideas and how they could all be addressed by taking a look at that anchoring event yes. of the hares mm -hmm. and the lynx populations fluctuating. Mm -hmm. That seemed to be puzzling for your kids, yes. right? It kept yeah. them engaged for a whole unit. I did. <laughs> I give some sort of puzzling phenomenon to the students because I really want them to um, think more deeply about the science, not just kind of the thread you'd follow through a textbook, but really kind of synthesizing ideas and thinking about um, different aspects of an idea and how, to put, how they fit together. So um, that takes a more complex idea to get them thinking about that. If we were to take a look at some timeline of your unit, what we'd see is that you have the same kind of practice mm -hmm. that recurs all the way throughout the middle of a unit. You repeat it five, six, seven times. And this practice we've called sense making, helping kids make sense out of activity. Can you describe what's the general pattern of this practice for you? How do you start it off? Um, well, I guess the way I would think about it is that I try to come up with activities that match with parts of an explanation that I want students to 
be able to build for their um, final explanation or final model of the phenomenon. So can, can I ask about that just for a second? You, you have in your head or on paper, you actually write out the explanation mm -hmm. on paper. I know that you do. Yeah. So you're taking a look at some critical piece of that explanation and you're, what are you saying to yourself? Um, for example, I want to the students to think about carrying capacity and so mm -hmm. what is carrying capacity? Kind of more like the, um, like a piece of the bigger explanation mm -hmm. and so then I planned an activity that would help them learn about that concept and then also um, kind of dig a little bit deeper and be able to explain um, why that would happen but also then connect it to this uh, um, story that they're working on explaining of the hair and the links. Up to this point, Bethany has described her work with the standards and how she has identified big ideas to teach. She has also selected a phenomenon that is complex to explain, and she developed a question that can engage her students over time. To complete her planning, she uses the final practice that begins with writing out the explanation for herself. This explanation can be written as just beyond what she would expect her students to construct. Here we color code all the component ideas in this explanation. Each of these should be addressed in one or more lessons. Bethany selects lessons then that are matched up with different parts of the explanation. The last step is to rough out which of the activities and key readings would fall into the first third of the unit, the middle third, and the final third. This process represents how we plan for ambitious science teaching. If all the steps are followed, we can be confident that we'll be focusing our teaching energies on truly important science ideas, that students will be challenged, and that each lesson will clearly build toward a significant understanding of how the natural world works.